so as mentioned, um, I am currently a senior scientist at Security Risk Advisors, uh, which is actually um, a, a new job for me and I'm very excited about that. So I do a lot of uh, research and innovation and focus on cloud security, engineering and architecture. Um, before that, I was um, an O365 sysadmin. So that's kind of my area of expertise a little bit more so than um, many other things. Um, and I'm also a grad student in computer science, so basically I'm just a masochist and have no free time, um, as well as being a Blue Team Village organizer. So here at DEF CON, you'll probably see me around quite a lot if you stop into Blue Team Village, um, to our Discord or wherever else. Um, and so I'm going to just hop right into it. Um, so the title of this talk is Exploiting the O365 Duo 2 Factor um, Loophole or Misconfiguration. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what the scope of this actually is. This applies to Office 365 uh, on Azure's or on an Azure tenant um, on which all basic authentication is not fully blocked. Uh, and we'll touch on that a little bit uh, later as well. Um, and this is happening on tenants where two-factor authentication or two-factor verification with uh, Duo is implemented. Um, and it applies to configurations most likely implemented prior to August 2020 or thereabouts, um, which I will get into. Um, so for a quick background, in order to understand kind of what's going on here, um, there are a couple O365 authentication types. So Microsoft, being Microsoft, uses its own terminology. Uh, so what it refers to as legacy auth is, is basic authentication. Uh, and these are protocols that send username, password, in a header, um, um, in plain text, essentially, uh, unless they're unless they're sent via HTTPS or some other protocol. Uh, modern authentication refers to a slightly different um, methodology with client-server authentication, uses access and refresh tokens, um, and importantly, modern authentication is a requirement in order for two-factor verification or any other MFA service to actually work. So that's a very important point. And then we also have some email protocols that may be familiar to people. POP, IMAP, SMTP are all legacy authentication protocols, although there is support for modern being built into them. Uh, the second one, ActiveSync, is going to be the most important one here. And then there are other ones like MAPI, RPC, and these are used uh, for uh, services like Microsoft Outlook. So what is this misconfiguration? Uh, so the first thing I want to clarify, Duo is not actually part of the misconfiguration. This is entirely on the Office 365 side of the equation. Uh, Duo's documentation explicitly notes that uh, modern authentication is required in order for, for this Duo to be triggered. So that is a very important point here that they actually do make clear. Um, the second part of this is conditional access policies in Azure Active Directory. So O365 as a tenant, use it's essentially backed by Azure Active Directory and all access is run through Active Directory. Um, and the configuration that Duo requires in order to work with O365 actually involves conditional access policy um, and what's called a custom control um, that basically enforces an action, i.e. Um, triggering the Duo authentication um, to a selected set of users, uh, cloud apps or actions, and conditions uh, if configured. And then finally, we'll, you, know, you can write a policy to either perform an action or deny access period. And this uh, access grant is where the Duo integration uh, actually happens and what sends it off to, to Duo to, be, to uh, go through that second factor. Um, so let's take a look at what that looks like. So essentially, under when you're configuring a conditional access policy, you have all of those previously listed uh, assignments and access um, under the uh, configuration in Azure Active Directory in the security portion um, under conditional access. So importantly, when you have conditions, you have options to kind of scope an action, a grant or deny by something that you select, one of those things being client apps. So this was in preview before August 2020, um, which is kind of why this, uh, is this mis misconfiguration has happened probably as widely as it has. Um, so you'll notice that, first of all, so th this year right here is actually the current one. Um, and I'll show you a little bit what the previous one looks like and why that would be an issue. But you'll notice that ActiveSync is listed separately. And in the new configuration, it's listed as legacy authentication client. So there are some Exchange ActiveSync clients that are actually integrated with modern authentication, but that is not necessarily um, 
not necessarily the case and it doesn't really indicate that it's always going to be under modern auth if it has a basic authentication um, workflow. So um, if not checked in this, as in this, this example, this duo policy, which operates under the condition of whatever users you select, conditions, client apps, all these three, or just the top two, which would be make sense to most people, um, it essentially means that uh, ActiveSync would not be triggered um, to, to be pushed out to, to Duo. And then another previous um, configuration that people have used is actually creating a second conditional access policy that explicitly blocks uh, legacy authentication clients. However, in the previous configuration, the only one that this actually applied to would be other clients the way it, it actually appeared because those are the commonly listed ones like POP and IMAP. So ActiveSync is kind of this weird uh, protocol that's hanging out separately and is a bit misunderstood when someone like a systems administrator who may not be as familiar with it um, is configuring this policy. So if we leave out ActiveSync, what does this look like? So if you go into uh, iOS mail, the regular mail application, not Outlook for iOS, and you go and you you hit ex, you know Microsoft Exchange account, you sign in. If you sign in with a company account, you'll get a pop up from Microsoft. You enter your password. This window will uh, will trigger the Duo prompt to actually happen. So it's essentially this is reaching out, even if ActiveSync is not actually triggered. So uh, there is basically iOS has support for supporting uh, modern authentication and triggering that Duo prompt um, right in its own application. So after signing, the dual prompt would show up, cool, enter your password, and Bob's your uncle, or whatever that weird expression is. That's the normal workflow. That's how people, normal users, would actually expect to be able to configure uh, mail on the Apple iOS application. However, um, if you actually cancel out of that previous window or configure manually, you can actually configure the, the active sync um, basic authentication side of the equation and wind up skipping the prompt entirely. And that is literally how this, it, that, how this exploit actually works. It's essentially fail out of the, the uh, duo two-factor prompt or skip it, configure manually for ActiveSync. And because we have that hole where con conditional access policy was not actually applied uh, to, to that conditional access policy, um, then this is what we wind up with, the ability to do this. And honestly, you know, this is something that when researching, you kind of go through this from this perspective of an end user who is just going to be able to, all they want to do is sign up for their email and they're not going to notice whether or not they're, you know, being prompted for, for Duo or not. In fact, they'll probably be happy not to be prompted for it. Um, but that is essentially how to do it on iOS and it still works. We've actually tested it this week. So, um, and this is also important to note because ActiveSync as a protocol is something that you can build right into an application or you know, run a script and password spray on an EC2 instance in AWS if you want to. Um, basic authentication literally is just a base64 encoded header addition that states what the authorization is. It's basic, includes the username and password. That's it, pretty easy. Um, in addition to that, ActiveSync gives clients access to email, context calendars, and other things, not just email. Um, but it also has no ability to enforce uh, authorization uh, aside from that initial authentication. So it essentially grants access to everything, which is why it can be uh, such a lucrative exploit if you would like it to be, or why you should be a little nervous if you don't want it to be. So why does this happen? Uh, prior to August 2020, on the left side, this image shows that ActiveSync was actually not listed or explicitly mentioned as being a legacy authentication protocol. So uh, when, um, when customers have configured things like um, this second policy is mentioning to actually block um, basic authentication, they may have gone right to that other clients, noticed that, that had pop IMAP and thought that that's all that, they, that, um, that was needed to block. And that's not necessarily the case. Uh, the updated version of configuration makes it a lot more clear, fortunately. Um, the other thing is that uh, client apps was in preview before August 2020. Um, and previously, it actually stated that uh, conditional access policies by default apply to browser-based applications and applications that utilize modern authentication protocols, which meant it only applied when it was able to apply and did not impose any kind of automatic block 
or um, implicit deny behavior. Um, in 2020, that actually uh, changed. So when you apply a policy, even if it's, you know, if you select active sync and it does not, um, and, and your client is using basic authentication, it at least sees that it's supposed to be enforcing um, with modern authentication and prompting, and it actually fails out. Uh, that behavior is, is newer. Um, and then the behavior of the client apps condition as well was updated in 2020. So previously, uh, you know, it wouldn't implicitly block anything or apply to to four, all those four um, options on the right-hand side. Um, and as of after 2020, uh, it actually checks all of them by default. So if a configuration was done after August 2020 uh, with similar steps, everything would be che checked off by default and uh, this whole would not exist because of that. Um, so I know I'm really probably pretty short on time at this point. <laughs> so um, just a, a quick um, note for, for actually finding this in a client if you're uh, Office 365 administrator and have access to the Azure Active Directory uh, blade in Azure. Um, if you actually search for client app exchange Active Sync, you'll actually see it. And that is only gonna show you the basic authentication side of Active Sync clients. Um, it fully re-authenticates, so you'll actually see frequent um, frequent authentication actions, which is actually pretty cool. Um, just a quick note on this, though. The, you have a few minutes. Thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, note about this. I just dropped a quick little Splunk query in here. This should catch most of everything and give you kind of a breakdown of who's using it. Um, but the sign-in logs are actually more accurate when they're um, you accessed through the, um, I think the, um, I keep wanting to say U UAC, United, uh, Unified activity log, that's it. Um, uh, unified audit logs in PowerShell and also in um, logs as, as they're configured and propagated to Splunk rather than in the portal. Because in the portal, it shows you in the list before you click details, it will show you the client app and it'll say conditional access success, even if conditional access was not applied, as you can see in that graphic there. This is really important because if your sysadmin's just looking really quickly, they're going to think that conditional access is working when it is actually not even being applied. So very important point right here. Um, so the first thing you can do to fix this is tweak conditional access policy, just include everything. Um, again, it's much easier now that uh, this has been reworked by Microsoft to actually um, do an implicit deny on um, on the applications that don't meet the protocol for what uh, for what this is. Um, and the end behavior is the client can authenticate Active Sync, and it looks like they can load an account, but they can't view anything, and we'll get a message saying, "Hey, you don't have access to anything," which is actually pretty cool too and newer. Um, and then you can also just disable legacy authentication altogether. Please do it. Please kill legacy auth. It is bad. That's kind of a uh, a universal truth. <laughs> Uh, but realistically, we know that many um, clients are still using it. You're always going to have that person who just has to use Thunderbird or Pine or whatever, and uh, they're probably a VIP. So um, just make sure to do due diligence. If you're enrolling users in two-factor um, via Duo, you're going to want to make sure that your conditional access policy covers everything. Uh, basic is auth is disabled for new tenants, uh, 365 tenants, and existing tenants that have zero use of basic auth. So if you've got one user, your tenant has not disabled uh, basic authentication. Um, plenty more resources on this. Happy to answer questions. Uh, and that's it. That's all I got.